We're at the new feed mill and the plywood that was inside our whey permeate pit here got stripped out today. So I'm gonna go down there. We're gonna put a line in there. Well, what exactly are we doing? Well, then Jan is gonna go down in the pit and then we're gonna redo some renegotiating of the contract. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise he's gonna stick in there. I don't think we're, I don't think I'm going in there anymore. No, oh well, we'll see. No, clean it up, move a pump over, or move a pump in, hook it up and see if we can get some way in there this week. That would be sweet. So these are the two pumps are already wired up, ready to go. Just gonna drop them in. So this pit is 10 feet deep. Pretty echoey down here. This is the hole they're gonna fill the tank from. And then we got the manhole there, and there's another hole for the hose for the pump. Tie it up there somehow. Yep. So now we got two ropes going to the pump over there, one that comes through the manhole, one for the hose, so we can pull it up wherever we want. More options, the better. I'll, I'll grab another rope. This is the thick one for now. That's what we're going to tie onto the, the pipe if it comes. Okay. It's the next day and I just got a phone call from my sister Miriam. She's in the Bobcat trying to bring a pallet of small square bales to the calf barn and apparently it just uh, fell over. So she called me in the Bobcat. I imagine it's leaning on the door so she can't get out. We're gonna go give her a hand. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Do it. it was an accident, okay? <laughs> okay, um, I think you should maybe just drive to the calf part and then we'll push it off. Otherwise, we gotta hand bomb all these things. So just lift it up a little bit. Stop, just start driving. You're good. This is kind of the Achilles heel of a Bobcat. You're always getting in on the door there from the front where you're lifting stuff. So we've had also uh, a mini bulk bag fell onto the door too, and that was even worse than this. But then you're stuck in there as the guy operating it until somebody comes and helps you. I guess you can use the back window, I think, to crawl out usually. It's kind of like a secondary emergency exit. The, the pallet or whatever's left of it. What do you have to say for yourself, Miriam? First time ever doing it? Shit happens. Shit happens. All right. Well, Go grab two more, I guess. Two more. <laughs> you know, this kind of sucks, but uh, at the end of the day, pretty much happens to everyone. 
and she still got it in the room here without needing to throw a single one by hand. So, you know what, at the end of the day, still turned out pretty good. It's all gonna end up in the same place, underneath the calves and the pens covered in crap. Currently just waiting for a truck to show up to the yard here. You guys remember Reese from Silaging. He drives one of our two silage trucks. Uh, today he's gonna be driving one of his own trucks up to the yard and he's got a big fat flatbed trailer on there just like Dennis's truck. And uh, we're gonna go pick up a load of bales. He already picked up two for us. This field's about 120 kilometers away from the farm. It's on the other side of Saskatoon. So where we are on the west side, this load of bales is on the east side. So we're gonna have to drive through the city our case wheel loader is already out there because he did pick up two loads before. The bale fork though unfortunately broke on us the first time we were loading bales so we couldn't finish it so we had to give up fix the forks and then about a week later now we're heading back out there for that last load. The case loader has been out there as well the entire time so it's going to be awesome to get that back on the yard and uh, get some other things going like cleaning the corrals out and hauling sand. So yeah we're just waiting for Reese to show up and then we're going to go pick some more bales. Truck with Reese heading out to the field. How's it going, man? Pretty good, you? Pretty good, pretty good. So, uh, tell us a little bit about your truck, man. It's a big Peterbilt. Big Peterbilt. Goes 150 clicks an hour. Sick. We just drive on Circle Drive right now in Saskatoon. Right on, man. It's pretty fun. Yep. I'll talk to you guys when we get out to the field. Nice. So these are the bale forks Brent made up. We're just gonna come in with the loader bucket, stick the cutting blade right here, and then we got some hookup points with some chains for the bucket. We should be able to grab all these bales. Okay, we got the forks attached. We just got the chains with these, I don't know what those are called. Chain tighteners. Turnbuckles. Sure. And then got her fastened on there. Now we're gonna try and huck some bales. Tilt it forward. Good, now back away. Going pretty good. One of 27 bales. So I was under the impression that I was gonna get on that loader and load all the bales, but I don't know, I think Reese kinda likes it. He operates a wheel loader on a daily basis at their farm too, so he knows what he's doing. It's not a full load, but it's looking pretty good. Now Reese is just strapping it all down. He's a professional at this. Yeah.
Looks good. I'll see you later, man. See ya. Have a safe ride. Thanks, you too. Big fat wide load sign at the back, looks pretty deadly. That is one sweet setup. All right, and uh, now we're gonna begin the journey. He's taking a little bit different route so he can take a little more pavement all the way back to our farm. So I'm taking uh, a bunch of grids, hopefully. It'll be like a quarter of gravel roads and the other three quarters will be pavement, which is actually pretty nice. Go ahead and turn the hazards on. Lower my bucket all the way. Get ready to send it. That right there is a potash mine. You got tons of those kind of scattered all across Saskatchewan. Uh, there's quite a few right around the big city of Saskatoon here. There's lots of people to work there. So that's where a lot of the fertilizer is created. It's shipped out throughout the entire world. And yeah, it's one of those things that comes from Saskatchewan. So pretty cool. The fastest I've had this thing go so far was downhill on the pavement just now. 47 kilometers an hour, just shy of 48. I wish I could go that fast the entire way. I would definitely make this a quick trip. But on average, this thing will hover around just under 30, just under 40 kilometers an hour. So it's going to be around that 38 clicks an hour pretty consistently. Sometimes a bit slower, sometimes a bit faster. So it's not too slow. First little underpass here. No issue whatsoever. Haven't seen any dumb drivers yet either, so that's pretty good. Definitely a rush hour in Saskatoon, that's for sure. So we're about to cross the bridge. You see the Saskatchewan River, which is pretty cool. The South Saskatchewan River. What a view! Looking a little dry this time of year. Train bridge on the other side. to go through a Tim Hortons drive through or something get a coffee maybe get a cool thumbnail for the video but not gonna lie I went uh, around the ring road of our big city here Saskatoon has about 250,000 people I think not quite 300 and they have a big circle drive around the entire city and it was just rush hour it was 5:30 when I entered the city so uh, that was stressful enough for me and I'm happy to be on my side of the city um, I'd definitely do it again if I had to. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just uh, glad to be done. I am still going to grab that coffee. We're just going to walk in instead of uh, terrorizing the drive through Made it back to the farm. So uh, that pallet that you dropped in the calf room, it ended up falling all the way over, hey? Yep. What'd you do with all the bales? I restacked them on two different pallets. Nice. Yeah. Right on. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.